Hi, welcome to the channel if you're new here. Welcome back if you've been here before. I'm up on the east coast of England at the minute, near a place called Scarborough. I've been up here for a few days now and I found some amazing spots. We found seals on the beaches, we found waterfalls on beaches, and we found car camping spots on cliff tops overlooking the ocean for the night. It's been fantastic hanging out down near the coastline. I'm gonna be abandoning the coastline today and I'm gonna be heading inland. I'm gonna be going to a really famous little spot up in the North York Moors called Rosedale. I found a 10 mile height, stretches all around the area. It should be absolutely fantastic. Although we do have a bit of an issue at the minute. Be as it is a 10 mile height, it's gonna take me five hours and it's already half past 12 and it's an hour's drive from here. So we really need to get a rig along. I'm gonna tidy the crib up. And we'll go burn some rubber. Oh wow, looks a good little area this one. There's a public toilet down the way. Nice little quaint village, free parking. Couldn't ask for more. I do however, I need to have a bit of scram before we go anywhere. I've had no breakfast this morning. It's now two o'clock in the afternoon. Had a little bit of a late one last night. Did some editing yesterday and then last night after finishing, just chilled out, watched a bit of football on the replays. It's nice sometimes just to take a bit of me time on these trips. Sounds weird, but you know, it's all about getting the camera out and recording stuff and so forth. Sometimes it's just nice just to relax and have a bit of me time. Ah, how does it get dog hair on that? I've never even had the dog in here. Hey. I mean, I say it was nice sitting watching the football. I'm lying really because as you may know, I support Man U, which is weird because I'm from Leicester, I know. But yeah, they've been doing all right this season, on and off, and we're on the off bit. We keep losing. Every time I watch them lately, they lose. So I think moving forward, I might just start listening to the game on the radio. Anyway, that's looking pretty good. Nightmare. I've just got a shot of my hair in the car window. I look like a badly remade Dolph Lundgren or something. I'm gonna have to get it recut or cut when I get back to Leicester, but uh, more importantly for now, I need to negotiate this village and find the head of the trail, fair with. Wow, it really is a beautiful little village around here. Really quaint little village green and parish around the old parish council and the church and little stores. Whew, middle of nowhere as well. Quite a drive to get to this little village. There's not much else around there. The village of Rosedale. Old man Grumps to told me about this one many moons ago. Every time I come up North York Moors or around this area, oh, have you been Rosedale yet? Well, yeah, today we have. He always tells me the tale of how, I think he's probably hiked this hike and he says it absolutely worn him out, something chronic. And then in the evening when they got back from the hike, they were staying on a campsite and they went for a, a really big drink. And uh, yeah, I think he damaged himself or twisted his ankles or something on the way back from the pub to the campsite. So, say in Thailand, sum num na, serves you right. Yeah, there's a the church, eh? But he was right. What a stunning little area. Ah, oh, put a smile on my face already, and the rain's holding out for now. Good news. Ah, more good news as well. Of a head of the trail through some oldie schooly worldy stands in the wall you know 
Nothing like an authentic gate. Start you off on the trail. Ah, look at that, slippy and slider. And a little taster of what's possibly to come. A bog fest. I mean, it has been raining all morning, so yeah, I have a feeling this trail might be a little bit damp in spots. Ah. First little port call on the trail then, nothing special, it's just a campsite, but uh, I couldn't resist getting the camera. Look at the size of these tents and whatnot. Some of these are massive. Look at that one. Oh, it's an awning as well, blooming hell. That's an awning on a blooming caravan. You get about 20 people in there. That's not a tent, that's a marquee. You could hold a coronation in there. Little one. <laughs> Look at this one, this one's pretty beastly as well. That's a double barrel with outdoor chilling <laughs> veranda type area. Ah, for all intents and purposes, I was thinking actually, like they must take hours to set up every time you come down on the weekend, but it is looking like most of those caravans are not permanent fixes, but you know, left here for the season, so wicked. Now, a few people that used to do that over the years, they have a caravan and then just leave it in one place and Sort of go there every weekend, must be pretty cool. I used to knock it thinking, oh, you're always going back to the same place, but you've got it in a beautiful area, must be great. Knowing on the weekend, yeah, toddling off to the coast or wherever ever it might be, must be pretty good. And knowing that everything's there and set up already, you're not got to mess about it. Eh? Just leave Friday night and phew, gone, come back late Sunday, wicked man. Oh, oh, I've had to cut back. I nearly just stood on something. Hold your noses. It's not a pretty one. It's a dead animal. Warning. If you don't want to see it, skip the next 20 seconds. Oh, and it's a little bunny rabbit. And it's a small little baby one. Oh, man, that's so cute and so sad at the same time. Also makes you wonder how it's been killed because it didn't look like it had been sort of garroted or anything, did it? It was uh, just dead there, maybe from mixes or something. Ah, oh, bless him. Nature. Gives you one hand takes with the other, eh? Still, probably come back to something better in its next life. That's my philosophy. <laughs> Bit of a mad deep one, but you know, like, you know, with Buddhists and such, and the Buddhist religion and such, and it's, I, I don't know, like, I remember seeing that seven years in Tibet when they were digging the cinema and they had to, like, protect all the ants and stuff. I've got this thing where if I do, like, accidentally kill an animal, i.e., insect or something then i have this thing where i think i'm sending it off to a better life in the next one so yeah now i think about it probably just doing it to appease myself because i'm an horrible bugger and i just killed something oh, that's not good is it should change it it is all mad that though isn't it all stuff going on that we don't understand that maybe and maybe not going on i always remember my auntie like past lives and stuff Years ago, we were up somewhere in Derbyshire or some moorland somewhere, and she'd never been there before. And we were hiking up a hill, and she stops and she went, Oh, I've just had a feeling. We're like, What? She's like, Yeah, over this hill, there's a little village, and there's such and such. There's a church on the left with a spire and all this. Lo and behold, she had described it all. And we went over the hill, it were there. She swore blind she'd never been there before. So, how? How do you know? Random. One of them. The mysteries of the multiverse. <laughs> it's been a long trip it's only been three four days feels a long one I'm losing it already love it oh it has been nice as well down near the coast but yeah up in the countryside again starting to lose it guess this is where i thrive the most up in the mountains where i can just grow out my beard and become a hermit talking of hermit check these little bad boys out wow there's some proper glamping going on around here there's some probably little hutty things i better not cheat to rent for the night though they got some in the glencoe ski resort <laughs> and they were saying they used to be about five ten pound a night i think they're about 60 70 now so shame shame one more days what have we just been talking about this gate behind there someone's just walked through it and it was wide open and like me i just left it wide open i don't know why as i walked through it it closed itself just had a shiver go up my spine <sighs> Let's keep moving. Do you have that one? Well, weird. Well, gotta say, beautiful little area, a little stream down the back, bluebells all around, but I'm not feeling this trail so much at the minute. I mean, look, it keeps doing it as well. There's multiple routes to go, one up there, 
I could cut across the bridge there. They all look all right, don't they? But um, no, we'll choose the most voggiest, muddiest one straight through the bog field. Uh, and it keeps doing it. I don't know. Still, at least we've got bluebells in the stream. Oh, I'm almost sinking. Oh, there's no way through. Golden Bennett. Oh. Listen to that. Squidge. Saying all that though, it is opening up to a pretty picturesque little spot. Look at this. Stony wall and gate. Sheepy and little lambs in the field. Yeah. Wow. Rosedale, springtime. Hello. Still no squeaky gate. Mm. Look at the little black one though. <laughs> Why do you get black ones? What's what's the deal with that? I'd always assumed they were a different breed of sheep or something, but I don't know. Oh mate, look at this one going mad. Love it. Oh wow. <laughs> oh mate, that is so cute. Look at its tail wagging. So happy. amazing love seeing things like that so cute just nature full of that what a day brilliant oh yeah oh wow just cut through a village of about four houses and uh yeah just cutting down this trail i was just thinking wow look at this this is the North York Moors in all its glory. And I do admit that it's a little bit hazy and whatnot, but I was just thinking, you know, there's so much land. We just don't see places like this in Leicestershire, you know? And it's only when you get up to places like this, you really do appreciate like the vastness and the amount of rural land. I mean, I know, all right, most of it's been farmed here, but it's still green and it's still grass and it's still countryside, you know what I mean? It's not what we get in the cities and you forget. I just envisage England being just big cities with roads between them and not much countryside, but once you get up here, I mean, this is moorland. It's not so much rural here. This is Rosedale, but certainly further east or rather west, it gets a little bit more moory and less farmed, I guess, but beautiful spot. Really sorry to get up here. It's been so long since I wanted to get on this trail. But this area, and now we're here. Right, I think I'm going to make an executive decision. You see, we're about a quarter of the way around the trail at the minute, about halfway up to the top point before it cuts back and comes back down. Yeah, the time and the weather, and I also, in all honesty, wouldn't mind saving off this trail for another trip. There's a car camping spot up yonder at the top of this trail where I'd like to stay another time. We're going to be staying, hopefully, down that way at the bottom of the trail tonight. So, yeah, just to save a little bit for another time, I think I'm going to head up into the mist and cut across and then sort of cut back down. It looks a boggy mess. Not a well-trodden trail. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to follow it. It's just a dotted line on the trail app, so fingers crossed. I mean, hey, what could go wrong? What did they say up here? Don't stray off the path. Stay on the road. Keep clear of the moors. I don't taste great anyway. I'll be all right. And now I've just said that, that sounds so wrong. Or oh, I didn't mean it like that. And you shouldn't have took it that way. <laughs> Moving on. Wow. That was a long, long detour. Steep. I'm very, very bogger. My legs, honestly. They're not worn out. Well, I've got three layers on at the minute, shorts, woolly leggings, and then these. They're sweating so much, honestly. They feel like a chicken in a chop house or something. Ooh, I could do with stripping down a bit. Ah, look at this though. Wow, if ever there was a scene from Werewolf in London, definitely don't want to stray off the path here, eh? Nightmare. No phone signal as well. Not calling for help. Freaker. So eerie up here. I'm scaring myself. This is mad. It's just silent. 
and the fog. Oh mate, come with me. Honestly, I almost feel like you're my only comfort at the minute. There's no one else here. Oh mate, just imagine if a werewolf bounded over the ridge line there. I mean, what would you do? You'd have no chance, would you? You'd be super fast. You'd be doing 60. You'd be doing grease lightning pumo just as far as you can over a ridge trying to get away. You'd never make it. I don't want to think about it. Talking of speed though, it is a bit of a weird one. My mate asked me the other day about Charlie, my dog, and how fast he can run. And I was saying to him that I go out on the e-bike and the e-bike will do about 30 odd mile an hour and the dog's pulling away from me. So blatantly doing 40 or more. And we were checking and obviously we, I mean, I don't think he's a beagle, but people say he's a beagle. Top speed of a beagle is 20. Foxhound, about 40, 45. So yeah. Guess what we got when we bought our beagle? It weren't a beagle, was it? Foxhound, he's lovely, but yeah, he's nuts. But at least he ain't a werewolf. Oh, it's gonna be a freaky night tonight now, isn't it? Alone on the moors, Aye. in fog. I tell you what, I bet this whole area is beautiful on the right day with stunning views all around. Today's not the right day. Well, hold my hands up. I've just been looking around, seeing if I can find something to see. There's little snippets of views and such and... Oh, hang on. Oh, no. Just another bit of cloud. Anyway, well, that looks a bit random though, doesn't it, if I'm honest? I don't know what that's doing in the middle of the moors. That's a bit weird. What is that? Why is that there? Just some cage all of a sudden in the middle of nowhere. What are you putting in there? A wildebeest or something? Before you're released into the wilds on the moors. Maybe that's where they aired up the werewolves. Grow them in a lab and then just have them out here feeding them and just getting them ready for the environment before they release them. I don't know. I think I've watched way too many horror movies, to be honest. Well, hang on a minute. We've got a plaque. We might have some imp. <laughs> what the heck? I can't see what I'm looking at. I don't know. This must be like some mad cultural spot of history or something, but uh, yeah, it's kind of lost on me today. Hang on. And it is, da, 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 da. bloody hell. Wow, I've heard a couple of them up here. I don't know what type of bird they are, but they're making an amazing noise. It's a real squeak or something. I've never heard anything like it, but anyway, the sheriff's pit. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, da, 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 da. It could be one of these, a ring, what, Uzi? Oh yeah, one of them, and it is. Oh mate, I've just seen a, Ring Uzi. What? Oh, a ring Uzi. Oh, there we go. That's better. So I can only assume what's in there is the pit. Maybe a big hole down there. And there is a little bit of a remnants up here. They're saying this sheriff's pit closed in 1911 or something. Oh, this is actually quite interesting. I mean, come on, inf, look. It says early ironstone mines in Rosedale were actually drift mines, which is a different type of mine where a horizontal mine shaft was driven into the seam from the valley side. And all that drift mining started around here in 1857. And then obviously there's a Rosedale railway that was taking all the ironstone out. What an amazing little area. And a bit more about these birds because I'm absolutely psyched. I've just seen one. They're called the ring oozle, and they are the mountain blackbird. That's so cool. We're blessed today. Screw the weather. What a spot, what a day, what a find. Ah, what a cheesy grin on my face. <laughs> oh, here we go. I'm heading back towards the crib at the minute, obviously. I mean, that's the way we were going since the start. In a full circle back to the crib, you know what I mean? But anyway, the car camping spot for the night. See, the two I wanted to do, well, the two I was going to check out, I'll show you on the screen. Um, they're down near Rosedale, and I know for a fact there's no signal down there whatsoever. Thing is, I'm just checking the app, and there's a car camping spot over there. And at the minute, well, I've got full phone signal. You know what I'm thinking. I'm going to go check that one out down near Rosedale, and if that one's no good, I'm going to bumble up this way. Could be a winner. Fancy a phone signal. Check up on economics and what's going on in the world and all that, you know. No. <laughs> I think it's been football today though. Oh my days. Yeah, that'd be nice. Look at that. Just realised. Well, I was going to say the fog's clearing, but it's not really. 
but we are getting a few little shots down into the valley i think that's that caravan park down that way and i was thinking i've been walking for a good mile maybe a mile and a half along this track but this is the train track isn't it this is the old train line that they used to bring all the wares from that mine down yonder it's mad though isn't it like they've ripped the whole thing up obviously it must have been train tracks and whatever you call them they are big bearers and such. Imagine how much material was originally laid down and then how much material was ripped up. I mean, what did they do with it all? I've seen a few bearers in a few people's living rooms, like on the roof and stuff, but that's a lot of material. This stretches for miles. And I'm gonna follow it to the end, I think, and then it cuts down to Rosedale and back towards the crib. So for now, in the fog. <laughs> what? I'll catch you back at the crib. Ah, right, time for a bit of scoping then. And there is two spots within a thousand metres of where I am at the minute. And then that third spot that I was looking at when we were hiking around with a potential of a phone signal. The thing is, it's only 20 past six. I've got time to sort of check these out. And if I don't like these, I could always drive all the way back to Robin Hood's Bay and get that spot above the bay. I think we'd get there about half seven, we'd still have light, so. We'll see how we go. We'll go scoping these, and then we'll take it from there. Oh, rabbit on the road. Wicked. Hey, this boat's well. I've just passed a load of signs that are saying dangerous road in winter, windy road, use low gears, and we cross the cattle grid. <laughs> All those things combined. Middle of nowhere, you know. There is, oh my days, yeah, here's a spot. Right here. Oh wow, I mean, this is this is doable and tempting. 300 meters outside of town. Not a bad little view for the night. There is, however, one issue. No phone signal. So, oh my days, I didn't realize it was that steep. Yeah, let's keep moving. This is not good, I'm in first gear. I feel like I should have had a better run up at this. Mate, I don't want to change gear, you know? 3,000 revs, ouch. It's oh, all right, we're in. See, got no power in second. Now I'm gonna have to drop back down to first. That's a steep hill. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm just gonna take my time getting up here. This is a bit manic. They weren't they weren't joking about the, uh, the signs for steep hills. Dang, we're on a flat. Happy days. Nearly at the spot as well. Literally all these spots are like, just a couple of hundred meters around here. Oh man, I got someone behind me as well. Oh man, there's supposed to be some parking around here somewhere. I'm not entirely sure where. Oh, this is it. Here we go. Perfect. Into the mist. Oh, look what view you could have had on a clear day. Blooming heck, nightmare. Oh, that's amazing. I've even got a bench and table here. I don't know, is that a little stone thing you can have a barbecue on top of? This is a pucker spot. Oh, wow. Although, oh, it's got a sporadic phone signal. Bear with, let's give it the old uh, BBC iPlayer test, you know? <laughs> I need to keep up with the BBC news, telling me what's going on in the world. Oh, my days. We may have just found a winner. And I really think we have. I mean, this is me last night on this trip and I'm not too fussed about either driving around or not driving around. I just want to have a nice little spot for the night that seems kosher and has got a little bit of a phone signal and all looks good here. And we've got something that I could probably explore later on or tomorrow. Some sort of kilns or something over there. Might be worth a little look in the morning if it's decent weather. And if it is decent weather, look at the view we're going to get. When that cloud clears. You can't really see it at the minute, but... That'll be a view. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna reposition the car and uh, get myself settled, you know. Wicked. Top little spot for the last night of the trip. I'm psyched. It's been a good one today. Started late, but it's turned out nice. I've got a manic one for the meal for tonight though. Oh no. Oh, I don't even know if it's edible, but we'll see. Bloody Christmas tree, look. Oh my god, that's like the rave mode. <laughs> Look at the state of that thing. Thank goodness they're only one colour. Oh, now I'm talking. I forgot to count. I think that's it. Eight. 
Could be on dim mode though, I don't know. Oh, hang on. Let me turn the LED lights on with the remote. Hang on. <laughs> it's not the batteries. Hang on. Look how close I have to get to the sensor. It's, it's near here. Seriously. I may as well have a bloody switch. I don't know what they're doing with that thing. It lulls you into a false sense of security thinking you've got some like flashy little remote control. Yet the reality of it is I have to get within 10 centimetres of it. It may as well have been a switch. It would have been better. A lot. Anyway, enough of that. Look at the state of the weather. Listen to that. Honestly, I can't believe how heavy it is. It's such a good thing I decided to cut back on that trail and not do the full length of it. I'd have still been outside now. I'd have been absolutely drenched. It is making this area a little bit more eerie, though. I've got to be honest. It's a bit dodgy. I don't know. Up the way, I've just got, like, a road that goes into the mist and cloud, and then now it's all raining. I can't see down into, the, into Rosedale or anything. This road... There's passing traffic. I'm hoping it's going to get quiet at night, which I think it will, but honestly, I've only been here about 45 minutes. I've already had one car full of clowns pull up. I mean, say clowns. They weren't, like, white-faced and wearing red noses or anything, but, yeah, some young'uns. I don't know what was up with them. Fair play, whoever, whatever, young'uns, you know, but they got out of the car and they were standing there screaming the red off. A bit random, but, yeah, so I hope it's not off for a through for, like, utes or whatever tonight i guess we'll find out but food time oh my days you see i wanted to cook this chinese pork no bone with a bit of cheesy mash but because i've cooked that about six times on the channel i thought i better do something a little bit more fancy tonight oh my days there's so many problems with this Firstly, it's a ridge monkey recipe and i saw it on the ridge monkey website youtube channel and well i can't find it anymore and even if I could find it anymore, it doesn't matter because I haven't got half the ingredients with me that I think I need anyway. And then the ingredients that I have got, half of those ingredients, I think are probably gone a little bit mouldy and a little bit out of date. That salad is supposed to be best before the 4th. I think it's the 8th today. I can smell it through the bag like vinegar. It's minging. But whatever, I'm going to attempt it and I'm going to try and do it my way. Oh, God. It's going to be a disaster. And I'm not just saying it because it is going to be really blooming messy as well. Look, it's a meatball panina. Do you notice something wrong with that straight away? Yeah, they're not paninis. I can't get paninis. What's going on with the world? Is there like a shortage of paninis or something? Are they on strike or something? The panini makers? I don't get it. Oh, crud. I really weren't joking as well. That salad might be off, but... Oh, that, that pepper's looking like it's been in the bath way too long and gone all wrinkly. This is not going to go down well. I don't know. We'll give it a go. If it all fails and it's disgusting, then, well, yeah. Still got them Chinese pork ribs. Oh, this smells so good. I don't even want this thing. There's no way I'm getting out in this rain to get this ridge monkey. I don't care. Oh, it's the easiest to get, but... Yeah, game on. Oh, me back. Now, here's the thing. This meal is relatively simple in its essence, although it is a little bit messy. There is, however, one main issue with it. Two things need to be cooking at the same time. And I got one cooker, so I don't know. I've got to slice and dice these and then heat them up, obviously. It's going to be a sandwich. And then I want cheese to be melted. And I want the salad if it's edible in there. And I figured I'd just kind of fry some of them off. Or that. But obviously also, I need to slice them in half. Because otherwise you're going to roll out the sandwich if I leave them whole. I mean, that'd be stupid, wouldn't it? And then heat them up. One eternity later. Nope. No idea. I don't know. Flip a coin and see which one I'm going to heat first. <laughs> I can't believe I just said simple when I was talking about cooking and then it came out of my lips as well. Those three things just don't go together, do they? I mean, let's be honest. Whatever it is I'll do, it's going to be a disaster and it's going to be chaotic. And evidently, difficult and out of my league. But that's the thing in life, isn't it? Got to keep having a go. Got to keep pushing forward. 
even if you're poisoning yourself half the time. We'll see you in the morning. Again, I will say, as I'm chopping these up, I honestly can't remember if this was in the recipe, but uh, it's in my recipe. Figured I'd just uh, lightly fry the peppers off before we uh, get it on with the main sheet I don't know. It will heat the pan up as well, I guess. I guess while well, they're frying off, oh, blooming heck. Yeah, that was, that was a bit overzealous, wasn't it? Good luck putting them away anyway. Yeah, anyway, um, while they're cooking, I can prep the panini. Oh, my days. Ooh, that, that feels a little bit hard. They're not, not as fluffy as they once were. Oh, my days, they feel a bit solid. Uh, yeah, crud. Hang on. I don't like all this white stuff on the back of it. I was just checking them for mould. What's wrong with that one? Ugh, it's got a black bit. Is that me? It's not the light, is it? <laughs> I don't like the look of that one. Oh, I don't like the look of any of them. They look minging. Oh, they smoke a bit. We'll, uh, we'll cook them well. They'll be all right. It's a thing with bad food, isn't it? You know, if, you, if, if in doubt, just overcook it, whatever it is. Bloody hell. I don't want to overcook these peppers though. Jeez. Give it on a minute. Bloody ridge monkey's on overdrive. Slow down there, boy. If we crack this open and it's got mould inside, then, um, yeah, back to the drawing board. They look alright. Oh, they look. They smell good. They are a bit out of date though. They're a bit hard. Be alright. Just wondering whether to try and fry a bit of salad off. But like I say, you know, if it's out of date a little bit. Maybe I should fry it. I'm not even sure I want to open this. Once I've opened it, I'm in a world of pain. And it's gonna stink. Look, we're having no garnish on this. It is what it is. If you were cooking it at home, then by all means put the garnish on. And about six other things that were in the recipe as well. Corbin and Bennett. My bloody things are burning. Whatever they are. Peppers. You! Gold. You know you're in trouble when it sticks to a non-stick. Bloody ridge monkey. Oh no. We'll definitely lost the pepper down the side there. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Don't hurt. Oh. Right, bear with, hang on a minute. I need to find that pepper. It's not like I want to eat it or anything, but Ooh. <laughs> it's... Ow! It's hot! Damn it. At least I know they're cooked. I'm not entirely sure how I was thinking I was gonna get all four pieces of that bread in the ridge. That's not gonna happen, is it? Oh my days, this is not gonna happen. Right, we're doing one at a time then. Oh my god. Disaster! Just gonna toasty warm that up a little bit. Uh, but I'll put them all be too fast. Just gonna toasty warm that up a little bit. While I prep the cheese from the world's smallest blooming packet of cheese for the most expensive amount of money in some random little shop in some village oh, i don't know they called it a one stop yeah probably right we'll only stop there one time never stop there again probably well expensive but we got cheese oh mate now i'm from leicester oh, i've had quite a bit of red leicester cheese in my time that does not taste like red leicester it doesn't taste like much at all. <sighs> That's Ming indeed. Who made that? Who? Wold's Edge? Who's he? I've never heard of him. No one knows of him in Leicester. He don't live in Leicester. He's an outsider. An imposter. Making Red Leicester under a Red Leicester name. It must be... It must be... It must be... Oh, shit. I'm talking. And I'm burning. Oh, no. Oh, oh God. Smoke out. Come on. Yeah. So we go back to the drawing board on that. It don't look great, does it? Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> oh, nightmare. Uh, yeah. Let's try that again, Clyde. Anyway, yeah, the red Leicester. Do you think it's protected like champignon? Or whatever it's called. I guess not. I guess it must be. Clotted cream. Devonshire. All that malarkey. Oh, 
funky taste to it. What's that about? Slight burner taste. What? What? Oh, don't want to burn these ones. Ow! Damn it! Oh, that burnt my hand instead. Where have I? Ow! Bloody Nora, that hurt. Right, let's not mess about. Otherwise, we're going to burn them ones and now they've got cheese on so they're worth saving now in with the meatball oh oh god oh mate it's in rich gravy oh this is not right i wanted them in bloody tomato paste oh jeez i mean i couldn't have got this meal much wrong oh much wrong -er. that's a word isn't it wrong -er. like a wrong un <laughs> but a wrong -er. oh mate this is a disaster bugger now I've got to spend 10 minutes chopping these in half. Why would I do that? I don't know. It'll work. It'll help. That's, that's logic. Because flat things don't roll. There's the logic. But meatballs, they're round and they'll roll. Off me sandwich. I'm not joking when I say the fact that these meatballs are in gravy and not tomato sauce is a bit of an headache. It's a bloody nightmare. Honestly, I've had that tin of meatballs and this meal on the cards for about three weeks now. And now it realise that it's bloody gravy. Gravy on a sandwich. It's going to be minging, dude. Oh, I'm going to have to dry them off after they've heated up. Right, let me just do this again. You didn't see the first one. I didn't really just drop one of them on the floor. It's okay. They're fine. It's a bloody dead. It's disgusting. Um, this is one sandwich. Oh yeah, I just remembered. It has two sides, like every sandwich. I don't know. I think I'll put ketchup on now, and that'll hold the bowls into place that are now pieces. Imagine the salad and garnishing going on as well at the minute, if you'd like. Right, the tomatoey meaty goodness of those meatballs is uh, bubbling away. So let's get them out. Damn it, gravy. I mean, not being funny. That's like ordering a pepperoni pizza for half time and when it turns up it's a veggie masterclass or something, you know what I mean? You'd be gutted and the dude's already gone and drove off and no one's answering the phone at the pizza place. Got it mate, left with it. Gravy meatballs. Oh, did not even look! Damn things are rolling and I've cut me off. Logics of science just don't compute. No! Oh my god. You know what I was? Honestly, considering putting that back in the ridge monkey to give it a bit more heat, but no. Well, maybe I could. No, it's still warm. It is actually still warm. Believe it or not, I've now got half of it around my face. That is actually quite good. Again, I think I would have wanted meatballs in tomato paste and not gravy, but I think I've got away with it with all the Tommy ketchup and the... Uh, the red peppers definitely work. Should have had onion as well. More cheese, always more cheese. Salad. And I got some passata in the box that I could have used as well, but yeah, I couldn't be asked. I won't lie. I mean, look. Yeah, it's all around my face, I know. And I like it. A lot. Aye. I think I'm actually going to make another one in a minute. That's really good. All right, I'll catch you in a bit. Oh, wow. So all I can hear is the wind howling. Nightmare, it's a bit eerie up here. It's been raining on and off, and when the rain's coming down, it kind of sounds like somebody's driving near you and such. It's a bit weird. I've only had one car really drive by in about the past four hours, but that was weird because the road's so close next to me. It sounds like someone's like almost pulling up next to you. It's really weird. I think I'm just freaking myself out. I think I need to get to bed. It's late. I'll see you in the morning. total blue skies this morning but we have got a little bit and the views are really really nice down into the valley as I suspected last night in the fog 
woke up this morning to a real nice green view beautiful sun was shining when i woke up as well through the window at about midday oh mate i had a right night last night i just enjoyed it i stayed up really late i watched loads of tv checked some social media and just did a bit of my thing Oh, got to bed about half two in the morning and then I couldn't sleep because I'd had about six coffees <laughs> but what a wicked little spot to wake up to and what a wicked little adventure I've had it's been a weird one cutting back to Leicester and cutting back again I think I've been back up here for about four days and it's just been nice it spurred me on for the next trip although the next trip might be in the back of the Kia so it might not be that great. It could be a little bit tight and a little bit compact and bijou beyond belief. But that's coming up on Sunday this week in two days time. Yeah, I'm gonna be getting the Kia out on the road. And then just to sort of mention it again, the next video after Sunday is gonna be Wednesday. So we're going Sunday, Wednesday thereafter. As for now, with these wicked looking kilns behind me, I think this is going to be a great point to end this episode. Big shout out to Blue Etty or Blue T for sending that unit over for me to test on this trip. That thing's lasted five days. It's really done well. I've edited a whole movie. It's kept all my things charged and it's kept the compressor fridge running literally for about five, six days because I left it running when I was parked back at home in Leicester overnight. So. Yeah, really, really impressed with that. And I'll leave a link in the description where you can go and check that out on all their units. Fantastic. As for now, big shout out to each and every one of you guys that watch and like and subscribe to the channel. And a big shout out to channel members, donators on PayPal and buy me a coffee. Big love to each and every one of you. As for now, I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did all the good stuff, hit the like button, subscribe to keep up with the series and definitely hit me in the comments. Love reading all those. And as always, you know you know. Take it easy. Enjoy the camp. Get ready. Someone's coming. Let's stay stealthy. All right.